Hallelujah. A great physician now is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The
are so grateful to be here. So am I, Lord. Thinking of your sweet spirit that is sitting in Lord Jesus. Lord, it has come to look upon our hearts this morning. Lord, many has come with the desire of your heart this morning, God. You know the hearts, Lord Jesus. As the face is different, so does the needs of the heart. Amen. We are here, Lord God, to give you all the praise, yes. the, all the honor, Lord Jesus. And you are worthy to be praised this morning, Father. Amen. We thank you for how you have brought us through this week, Lord. Some more, maybe down and weak, Lord Jesus. You know it all, Lord. Amen. You've raised him up again. You've given him strength. You've given him new hope, new health. Lord, and we know, Lord God, that you're always with us, even Amen. in us, until the very end of this world, Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, and as we take our minds through memory lane, how you have, Lord, brought us through trials and heartaches, yes, and you have kept us, Lord, in such a state that we come back here, Lord, to give you all the thanks, Lord, Worthy all Lord. the praise, Father. For you are all worthy of that, Father. Amen. We pray this morning for our, our chorus here, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our musicians, Father. Yes, Lord. Most of all, your minister that you yes, use. Yes, Lord. Pray to anoint his mouth, Lord. Mm. May you send down a pull of fire to anoint his tongue, Lord Jesus. Jesus name, May you bless the word that will go forth, Father. Mm. May you bless to the believer's heart this morning. Amen. Lord, may you grant every heart's desire. Yes, my God. Those who couldn't make it this morning, no, pray that you may bless them. Yes, Even my those who are on the way, that you may protect them, Lord. Yes, my God. We pray, Lord, as we give everything that will transpire this morning to your capable hands, mm. that you may bless everything that we do. We ask all these things, Lord, at our how will be done but you all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm very happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's such a privilege. Amen. Yes, there is joy in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just sing the song, Give Me That Old Time Religion. If it was good for Brother Branham, yes, sir. it is good enough for me. Amen. Amen. That's all we need. Amen. It's the old time Holy Spirit and the devil won't go near it. That's the reason people fear it. There's good enough for me to hold me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me.
pena por mí que me da que me da Amen. Got a testimony from Sister Charmaine. Praise the Lord. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I am so happy that I serve a living God. Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Do you know why? Because the grace of God has been really good for me. Um, as you know, I had brain surgery and I wasn't sure if I was going to remember everything. I wrote them all down on my phone just in case I come back and I know exactly what I need to be doing for the assessments. But hey, it's all come back all by the grace of God. So in the week, um, I'm helping out another facility and uh, the facility manager came and said, Shemaine, I need to do a business proposal for this multi-sensory snoozing room that you have suggested for the people with dementia. I said, yeah. She said, well, I need your help. I need you to help me out. I need to have it ready by Thursday for the executive meeting. I can do that. No problem with the love of God in my life. I know I should be able to do that. And I put it all together. I gave it to her on Wednesday. She's like, really? Oh my Lord, it's like five pages. I said, that's all the questions you asked me to answer, and I did. So she gave it to the executive manager. He came to me and said, Hey, Mrs. Rowland, I'm so impressed with you. I absolutely love this business proposal. He said, You've done a fantastic job. You sure you don't want to work for us full time? I said, Yeah, if you give me full time hours, money, consultant hours, I'm happy to work for you. He said, Oh, let's stick with three days, eh? I'll get back to you on that. So I just want to say, it is by grace that we serve the Lord. So I'm going to put my husband up just to sing a little song with me. Um, we'll sing it in Afrikaans and then we'll sing it in English as well. There's another, another, another here to There's another, another. Oh, I know it's great. 
Amen. It is grace to serve the Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the youth, the choir, to come forward and bless the saints with the song. Amen. Amen. Are we still all happy? Amen. It is by the grace of God that we are here. Amen. We are what we are by the grace of God.
I hear the sound of freedom. Yes, Amen. Did we rise back to our feet? We sing the song Dove Leading the Eagle.
you are God and you loved us from before the foundation of the world. We are here this morning because Lord Jesus Christ you made the way for us. You died on the cross of Calvary. You have called us your children. Now we gather on a Sunday morning like this and we commit our hearts, our needs, our situations before you. We feel your sweet presence Father. May you now take control of the preaching of the word. Lord God of heaven, that we may hear from the throne above. Take control of the atmosphere. Our tired bodies, Father, may you quicken them, give us strength and alertness to be able to hear. And not only just to hear in the natural, but may we have the faith, ready, prepared, ground in our hearts to receive the seed of the word that it may bring forth the fruit that I expected, Father. May your Holy Spirit have preeminence in this place as we glorify your name. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy to be back again in the house of the Lord. Amen. I hear myself very loud. I don't know if you are fine with the sound. If uh, you can help with the adjustments there to make sure everybody is comfortable. Uh, But I'm hearing myself very clearly this end. Um, So uh, like we've previously announced, we 
Uh, I'm going to be traveling out of town this coming weekend. And uh, so Brother Paul will remain responsible. If you have any need, you can contact him. And I'll be constantly in touch with him. And the deacons will still be playing their role. So please, uh, everything continues. Amen. And uh, we had um, a, a Zoom fellowship uh, last night. I'm almost tempted to say this morning. <laughs> yeah, because we left after midnight with uh, Brother Vin. Uh, just to be able to meet uh, and, and just speak uh, on, on, on Zoom and be able to fellowship and just get to know each other better. And so we appreciate the Lord for that. And the, they are also looking forward to the meetings that we have planned on the weekend of the 27th and 28th of February. Uh, as you know, it's a long weekend coming. Um, but we have a 12 hour difference. We, have 12, we are 12 hours ahead. And then we are also going to have other brothers participating, uh, Brother Malcolm Weno from New Zealand. We are going to have Brother Raymond Jr. We are going to have Brother Ian from the Philippines. We are going to have Brother Itot from Indonesia. We have uh, quite a few people and we might have some brethren joining from uh, South America. So this, we've got to try and work out the times uh, to see what works for us. But we, I think we were given permission to be a bit selfish and focus on us. <laughs> But we don't want to be too selfish. We, we want to make sure we also kind of accommodate, especially Brother Vin, because if it is 6 p.m. here, it's 6 a.m. there. Uh, so you can imagine if it is 12 midday here, he's preaching midnight uh, in the Caribbean. So we want to try and work out the times and see what works for us. But what that means is we might have to adjust our usual times and be able maybe to start a bit late in the evening or a bit early in the morning. We'll just see. We are going to finalize probably by end of this week on the program for the meetings, just preparing you for the adjustments. Amen. It's not very often that we have these kind of meetings, so it's just once in a while. Amen. And so I'm sure we can be able to sacrifice a bit of sleep. Amen. To be able to just enjoy the world whilst we still have the chance to be able to enjoy the word and to feed. Amen. And to grow and be strengthened and established in the faith. So we might make adjustments and maybe we might have one or two services that ends at 9 uh, in the evening or 9.30 or somewhere there. But the Monday is going to be a public holiday. I think that's the idea of having meetings on a long weekend so that most people, I know some people work shifts so it doesn't really make a difference. But a lot of people, when it's long weekend, they might have the Monday off so that we can probably be able to take advantage of that and, and rest up a little bit. Uh, so that's all we have. Just pray for us as we travel. Amen. We see the restrictions getting lifted, but they can be put in place again the next day. So just pray for us. I'm not intending to be closed in anywhere. <laughs> Amen. It's, a, it's an act of faith to travel around this time. So just, just remember us in prayer. I'll be traveling with Brother Benoit. Uh, so just pray for us. Amen. If we can go straight into the Word, the book of Romans, chapter 9. Uh, I'm just looking. Uh, I, I'm not seeing any face that I'm not very familiar with. Uh, if there's any people visiting, uh, may God richly bless you. And you are welcome as we feast around the Word. Amen. Not just around, but we feast on the word. Amen. Romans chapter 9, we start from verse 1. Just want to appreciate uh, uh, the office bearers, uh, the brethren that sacrificed their time yesterday. Not just them, but their families as well. Uh, we had a four-hour meeting in the morning from 8 to around midday. And then in the evening, we had a meeting from 8 to around midnight. So that's a lot of sacrifice and just want to appreciate all the sisters and little brothers that are missing daddy from home. Amen. As we try and just attend to the Lord's work. Amen. So keep praying for the uh, responsible people in this church. They are sacrificing a lot of their time and energy and family time. Amen. Let's just pray not only for them but for their families as well. Uh, Romans chapter 9, we start from verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, 
that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth but of God that sheweth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose, if I raise thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth, therefore had he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he, he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For hath, who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to, that, uh, to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay, or the same lamp, of the same lamp, to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? Amen. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Did you see my quotes, brother? Amen. If you can help with uh, getting the quotes ready. Uh, I didn't really make arrangements with that. You may be seated, brethren. Now, as we go through chapter, Romans chapter 9, Paul is clearly showing that he wishes that he could have made the sacrifice somehow to get all of his brethren, the Israelites, saved. Amen. But he says, but not all Israel is saved. In verse 6, right? He says, not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are Israel. The promise was unto the seed of Abraham. And the understanding of the day, the understanding of Israel or the Jews at that particular time, they believed that they were saved just because they were Abraham's descendants. Amen. And now Paul is bringing in clarity on their thought of thinking that they are saved just because they are Jews. He's bringing in clarity and he's saying, I wish that was the case. But he's now bringing in clarity that it's not the case that the word has failed to be fulfilled when he says his seed shall inherit the earth. But he's now starting to clarify that the seed being talked about is not the natural seed. Yeah. Amen. 
He is starting to show them that not all Israel is Israel. So you can actually, through the natural flesh, be able to trace your genealogies and trace your family tree all the way to Abraham. But that still will not qualify you as Israel in the way that the Lord spoke about the seed of Abraham. Amen. But then he's starting to show them in Romans chapter 9 that you can look at even the Sarah herself, that Sarah was told that you shall have a son. But we know that the seed of Abraham was not only Isaac, but the promise was through Isaac. But Isaac was not the only natural seed of Abraham. If we can go to the book of Genesis, chapter 25, and we start from verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, and we start from verse 1. The Bible says, Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was, that word I tried to learn to pronounce it, Jewish names, Shona mother language, English as the medium of communication in this church, it's a mix of a lot of things. But you can just pronounce it the way you can pronounce it. I'll avoid that. Amen. <laughs> I will pronounce it as Kitara or Kitura. And she bare him Zimran and Jokshan and Midan and Midian and Ishbak and Shur and Jokshan begat Sheba and Didan. The sons of Didan were Asherim and uh, uh, Litushim, Litushim and uh, Lumim. And the sons of Midian, uh, Ephah, and Ephah, and Hanok, and uh, uh, Abida, and Elda, all these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Amen. Abraham had many children. Amen. Isaac was not the only child, yes. but Isaac was the only child of promise. Right. So when it comes to people who could trace their genealogies and end up with Abraham, there was many. Ishmael was a child of Abraham but not the promise. Yeah. The promise only came through Isaac. Yeah. Clearly showing that the promise was not going to come as a result of natural seed, but it is spiritual seed that is being talked about. Because the promise comes through the spiritual seed. And that is the clarity that Paul is bringing when he's giving the explanation in Romans chapter 9. And he's starting to show them that as much as you can be Israel in the flesh, but according to the promise of the word of God, the seed that is referred to by the word in terms of the seed of Abraham is not natural seed. It is spiritual seed. And what kind of seed is that? It is faith. The seed talked about is faith. Because Abraham is the father of our faith. Amen. So he's... He, Paul is now starting to show Israel its place and how that you can be a part of the commonwealth of Israel and still not be an heir to the promise. Amen. Amen. And he goes on to show that even before the two children were born, Jacob and Esau, amen, God had already made a choice. Amen. Before they were even born, yeah. amen, God had already made a choice that he would love Jacob and Esau, he would not be able, uh, 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 he would not uh, 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 give him the same privilege as he had given to Jacob. Showing that God by election knew already that even though it is the same seed, but he's going to pick some and leave some. And Paul goes on to say that 
try to explain that people may question God and say, so if that's the case, how come he finds fault? But God is the creator of everything. Amen. God is the potter. He is the one with the lamp of clay in his hands. Amen. Amen. Remember, we did speak about the five uh, foolish virgins and the five virgins. Amen. In the parable of the ten virgins. Amen. And we clearly showed that out of the same material, out of the same material, because the Bible says they were all virgins. So they were in terms of quality, characteristic, and, and all the natural things you could look at, you'd say they were all alike. But there was one thing that made the difference. Yes, it was the presence of oil in the lamb. Amen. Amen. And it is the same thing with this. In the natural, when you look at them, actually the seed that does not receive the blessing looks better in terms of natural qualities. But yet God is the one who makes a choice. Amen. So it is the same material. Out of the same lamp, a porter can decide to make a vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor. Out of the same lamp of clay or whatever material it is, someone can use uh, 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 the material to make cups that kings and queens can drink and enjoy their cup from. And out of the same lamp, someone can make a toilet seat. So it is the choice of the porter to decide whatever he wants to use the material for. Amen. Amen. And that's, the, that, that's the, what Paul is bringing about when he's preaching on this one. Amen. And we saw that Abraham had many sons, his own natural seed. He had many sons. But when it came to giving them the most precious, all that he had, yeah. the Bible says he gave it unto Isaac. Right. But unto Sam, he gave gifts yeah. and moved them away yeah. from his son of promise. Amen. And we see a fulfillment of Genesis chapter 25 even in our day. Yeah. All that he had, yeah. he gave to the promised Amen. seed. The seed that comes by faith, mm. which is the bride of the end time. Amen. She's got all that he had. Yes, what did he have? His word, yes. his spirit, Amen. his life. He has given her that. But unto the sons of the concubines, he has given them gifts. And they are happy with the gifts and content with the gifts. But the chosen, the elected, the true seed that comes by promise gets more than a gift. She gets his very life. All that he had. All that he is. She gets that. He gets that. Amen. And that's our calling. Amen. So my title uh, this morning is The Purpose of God According to Election. Amen. The Purpose of God According to Election. Amen. And I think it is a very important uh, 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 revelation for a believer to have. To understand that God does everything by election. Yes, to, show, to, to understand that you are not here this morning by mistake. You are here because God designed you. He placed something within you that would enable you to wake up on a Sunday morning when everybody is just happy and relaxing at home and having a coffee or a drink as warm as it is, probably a fruit juice or something. You are busy thinking of going to church. Why? Because God has placed something on the inside. Amen. By election. It's not anything that you have done. Because those two children, before they were even born and done anything, God had already made a choice. Amen. So you are not here this morning, uh, you are not a child of God, you have not been filled by the Holy Ghost because you were the best Amen. in the world. But Amen. it's because you were elected. Amen. The purpose of God is not in works. Yeah. The purpose of God is not in natural qualities. The purpose of God is in his election. Amen. Amen. So you can look at the person next to you. You can look at the person looking in front of you and say, but why would God choose this person? That's where we lose it, brother. Because God does not look at what you look at. God looks at his election and his purpose. Amen. You can imagine the frustration that Esau was having yeah. when he was looking at Jacob having the birthright. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. 
My first quote, brother. Hebrews chapter 7, part 2, 57, 09, 22. The purpose of God according to election. And the prophet says, Esau tried his best to become a Christian. Amen. And couldn't do it. The Bible said he wept bitterly, seeking a place to repent, and couldn't find it. Before he was even born, God condemned him. Because he knew he was a rotten shyster in his heart. God, by foreknowledge, knew it. He said, I love Jacob, and I hate Esau. And Esau looked like the gentleman. He stayed home taking care of his old blind daddy, fed the cattle and everything, was a good boy. And Jacob was mama's boy, little old sissified storyteller. That's what he was. You have to admit it. The Bible admits, brings it, run around doing everything and mama hanging around with uh, mama. But yet Jacob, with all of his ups and downs, in and his sissified ways, he still had respect to that birthright. That's the key note. The main difference between Jacob and Esau was the fact that they had different levels of respect for the birthright. But in terms of natural qualities, you would choose Esau over Jacob. Paragraph 324, the prophet continues. And says, Esau was twice the gentleman of Jacob. If we had to judge him today to be a member of our church, you would take Esau a thousand to one. Look at the odds. A thousand to one you would take Esau if you didn't know him. But God took Jacob. What would you do with St. Paul if he wanted to be a minister? A little old hook-nosed Jew. That's Brother Branham saying that. Amen. Don't charge me with anti-Semitism. Amen. Amen. And his mouth setting sideways, going along just fussing. And how he's going to tear out the church. He's going to do everything. He would thought he committed the unpardonable sin. But God said, he's my servant. Amen. God takes men and makes them different. Yeah. Not men taking God and becoming different. God takes man and makes him different. It's not what you do, what you will, what you think. It's what God does. There you are, and that's the story. It's not what you think should happen. It should have happened this way. It should be so and so. It's not what you think. It's not how you see it. It's what God thinks about it. And God will choose something, someone, over someone that you think deserves better. It's his choice. Now, that's with anything in life. It's his choice. It's his election. It's in the way he does things. And that's where people start stumbling. Right there. That's where people stumble. Because we, we try and understand the mind of God with our carnal minds. Our brains are too small to understand the purpose of God. <laughs> because his purpose is in election. Amen. So you can look around and you feel like no one deserves. No one qualifies. No one is able. But yet God will choose the list of everybody and say this is the one who's going to do the duty. Can you imagine that in Israel at that time of all the people the Holy Ghost has fallen down there's a massive uh, revival in Jerusalem so many wonderful men of God are 
They're having so many great things and the revival, the saints are all gathered together and the deacons are doing their jobs and people are bringing in, they are selling their land and bringing in all the money, sacrificing, you know, and people coming together, just one big bunch of love. Amen. And people know each other, they love each other, they are hugging and everything. And God lives all of them and he goes after Paul who was busy persecuting this group that loved each other. (laughs) A lot of people stumbled at Brother Paul in the scriptures, not our precious brother. (laughs) Amen. Not our precious brother. But Brother Paul in the scriptures. Amen. Why? Because according to natural qualities, Right. <laughs> you would not compare Paul with some of the disciples that were at Jerusalem in the Holy Ghost revival. <laughs> he was out there. Yeah. And Brother Branham, when he comes on the scene, he says, I'm the one who was out of season. Why? Because he was never part of the Pentecostal movement yeah. that was going across. He was born out of season. He was not the founding fathers of the Pentecostal movement. He was not at Azusa Street. Neither was he part of that pioneering group. Amen. Of the Pentecostal movement. And yet God in his choosing, of all the places he could have chosen his prophet, he goes up the hills of Kentucky to look for a prophet. Not to look for him as such, but to pick a seed that he had already appointed, elected, before the foundation of the world, to be a prophet to the age. No education. And he says, this is my prophet. I want this one to be my prophet and to take my message all over the world. (laughs) Brother, people stumbled at Brother Branham with his English. You know, there's some words that you can... Brother Branham would just create words. He would just say things, you will not find some of the things in the dictionary. But he knew what he meant. If you start stumbling at Brother Branham's English, you are not going to believe the message. Amen. If you take a red pen and you hold a spoken word book and start to go line by line, you are go- that book is going to turn red. But that's not what God looks at. The election of God. His purpose is in his election. Amen. He will choose whom he wants to choose. Yes, sir. It's not about what you think. Yeah. Amen. It's not about what you wish had happened. Yeah. It is about the purpose of God. And a believer will always choose the purpose and the election of God yeah. over anything else. Yeah. And that's why we are here. Glory. We are here not because we were the best yeah. in terms of qualities. Yeah. Amen. But the song that was sung here was saying that it's by grace. Yeah. That we are here. Brothers, there's other people in other religions in terms of quality that are better than us. They are dedicated. They are sincere. Amen. They dress better than us. They love their God. They've sacrificed their lives. But yet God did not choose them. He chose you and me. Why? Because we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. So when people look at you, And people look at me. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. Especially where I'm standing right now. Because I don't qualify to be here by my own natural abilities. But I'm here by the election of God. Amen. Amen. I did not qualify for it. But he chose me. Amen. And brother, it's a hard one to swallow even for me. But it's his choice. (laughs) I think even Sister Abigail always prays, but Lord, why did you have to choose my husband? (laughs) Well, sometimes it gets too hot in the kitchen. (laughs) You want to jump out, but if you have to cook, you have to cook a meal. Amen. It's not a choice, but the election of God will pick you out of nowhere. Amen. Amen. John chapter 15. Verse 15. 
Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit, your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, ye may give it to you. If you don't see the election of God in your own personal life, you are never going to accept the election of God in another individual's life. And that's the biggest problem. People have not accepted their place. People have not accepted God's purpose for their life. They can never accept other people's purpose. But it's not you who chooses. It's not you who chooses. It's God. You did not choose yourself, but God chose you. Why did he choose you? So that you may have fruit. And not just fruit, but that you may have fruit that remains. <laughs> he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That's not some fruit that's going to rot. That's some real genuine fruit. That's not some put on fruit. That's not some put on character. That's not some put on patience. That's not some put on temperance. That's not some put on brotherly kindness. That's real genuine steadfast remaining fruit. And you cannot have that remaining fruit without without the calling and election of God. Why? Because those fruits are produced by the Holy Ghost. And you cannot have the Holy Ghost without the seed, the gem of life in you. And that's the greatest joy for the believer. That's your greatest joy. Your greatest joy is when you see God filling your heart with the Holy Ghost, you know he's saying, you are a part of me, and I'm a part of you. You are the seed, the faith seed. And that's what makes you happy. Not because brother so-and-so smiled at you at church. Not because sister so-and-so has given you approval. You smile because you know the love of God is elective love. You don't seek people's approval. You seek the approval of God. And if you get approval from God, everybody with the spirit of God will approve you. Many times we are trying to seek approval from natural human beings with natural struggles and emotions. We need to seek approval from God. Because you were never called to believe by people. You were never called to be a believer by people. Someone might have testified to you, but they never called you. You were called by God. And if God called you, God will prove you. And that's where the problem is. Because we try to seek approval from people. And we neglect God who called us. Amen. Amen. But if you seek approval from people, you will not qualify. Yeah. Because Esau qualifies better than you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Brown says the odds are 1,000 to 1. Yeah. You don't stand a chance with Esau. Amen. He's a good brother. Good brother. But it's not that. Yeah. Amen. When you look, that's why there's all this anti-Semitism. When you really try to look at the Jews, sometimes you can't blame people that stand against them. Because our brothers and sisters love money. And they, 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 they are very thrifty. Very thrifty. And sometimes very stingy. But that makes them very good, shrewd business people. Amen. And they succeed in what they do. Because when they approach money, they mean business. 
If you had to look at the Jews and some of their decisions, I am one person who appreciates their place yeah. in the plan of God and all that. But it doesn't mean everything that Israel does, I approve. Yeah. Yeah. Israel goes and bombs the place, I just say, yeah, we stand behind Israel. For what reasons? What reasons? The one who ordered that bombing, is, is, is he a prophet or a politician? Some of the decisions of Israel have got nothing to do with the purpose of God. They are political decisions made by politicians who need to win votes. If you want to tell me about Israel, the seed, we talk something else. I know you go quiet on me, but search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Not all Israel is Israel. And it doesn't mean every politician in Israel is converted. They are serving political purposes. And we all know politics is of the devil. So I don't want to blindly just support things just because there is a word Israel there. I've been given myself to see. <laughs> I can separate the true seed from the false one. So some of the mistakes you can understand why sometimes a whole region can be against them. Because sometimes they make wrong decisions. But yet with all the wrong decisions... And all the things you can point at, they are still God's chosen people. Amen. So it's not in, even when you look at the size. I mean, when sometimes when you look at even the old uh, uh, cartoons they would, that they would draw uh, of the Jews, even the prophet was describing them as a hook-nosed Jew with a nose like that. That means on physical looks, when you really look at the characteristics, there's things you can pick there <laughs> that are not exactly, that don't really conform to the norms of beauty and looks in the natural sense. But God's eyes see further Amen. than the natural looks. Amen. God's eyes see further than the mistakes. He says, I've chosen you. Israel is my firstborn. Amen. Amen. Was it because they were a great nation? No. Because when you look at their beginning, their foundation, yeah. Abraham was in Babylon. Amen. Um. <laughs> he was in Babylon. And God called him out of Babylon Amen. and started a lineage. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So you go to DNA, you find they've got very similar DNA to other people. But it's the seed. It's the spiritual seed that is in them people. That's why Abraham was saying, don't let my son marry any one of these local girls. Go back to my people. There was a mystery there. He knew he needed to marry a near kinsman, a blood relative, in order to continue with the lineage. You see that in the natural sense, but it was all a type of the spiritual that we can look at today and be able to see this is what needed to be done. Amen. Amen. It's God's choosing. Amen. Not what we think. Uh, the Smanian church age. It is not the person. I think that's a very strong statement in itself. It is not the person yeah. that comes predestinated eternally from God. No, no, what, what are we talking about? What, what are we talking about? Right? It is the word. Amen. And the prophet goes further. Or oh, the seed. Amen. So what is predestinated is not this overall. This. That's what the prophet is saying there. It's not this natural overall that we have the fingers with the fingerprints and everything. That's not what pre what's predestinated. What is predestinated is the seed, the word of God that is right on the inside. That is it. Way back there, too far back for the human mind to grasp the eternal God with eternal thoughts thought and decreed, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Romans chapter 9 verse 13. And neither was born, and neither had done good or evil. See? 
It was that thought. And then that thought became expressed. And God brought back Jacob because Jacob alone was seed. Jacob alone had the seed. That is why he had respect to the birthright and covenant of God. Jacob alone had the seed, but the natural overall genetics of Abraham, of Isaac, was in both sons. But what was predestinated was not the natural flesh. It was the seed, the word of God right on the inside. That's the thing that responds to the light of the word. Because Brother Abraham says, when the Lord Jesus Christ went and was speaking to that Samaritan woman at the well, he says, the light flashed on the seed. Amen. 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 So the children of God that are elected and called, what is predestinated in them is not the physical things that you look at. What is predestinated is the seed. And that seed is eternal because it is the word of God. It was a thought of God before the foundation of the world that you would come on this earth. And he chose you. So whatever way you came, the natural seed of your father and your mother is not what God looks at. What God looks at is the eternal seed of his word that he placed within you. That's why you can be born of the same father and the same mother. Sanctified, Holy Ghost filled people and one is a believer and one is not a believer. The difference is in the election and the seed that was placed in you before you were even born. That's the danger of looking at the natural traits. Because the natural traits are not the ones that are predestinated. They are not eternal. What is eternal is the seed that is in the individual. Amen. We can go ahead. So, and what shows you the difference is the way we react and respond and the respect that we give to the birthright. And the prophet says the birthright is the Holy Ghost. Amen. The prophet says the birthright is the Holy Ghost. But with the Holy Ghost comes everything. So, when it comes to the, bra- to the virgin, the difference between the foolish virgin and the wise virgin is their attitude towards the birthright, towards the oil. So, this other group was determined to have oil in their lamps. But the other group, well, we go to church. We are brothers and sisters. God bless you, brother. We are in the message, in the framework of the message. Brother, being in the framework of the message does not mean you are bright. You can be in the framework of the message and you don't pay the right respect to the birthright. The difference between the bride, the foolish virgin and the white virgin is one. It is the attitude towards the birthright. And going after the birthright and obtaining the birthright. That's the difference. Otherwise, in terms of other qualities... They are the same cloth. Now we can, we've applied it to the denominations for many years. We can bring it into the framework of the message. It's not everyone who says, Brother Abraham is a prophet, who's going to be raptured. It's not everyone who says, I'm a believer, who's going to be raptured. It's not everyone who says, I'm in the message of the hour, who's going to be raptured. The ones that are going to be raptured are those that were seen before the foundation of the world and God knew that they would be raptured. <laughs> you don't get, you don't surprise God as, oh, my son or my daughter made it. He knew he would make it. There's no surprises with God. You were designed to make it. You may not think like that now, but if God purposed that you will make it, you are going to make it. If you are true seed, you will hear that word. The Spirit will baptize you into the body of Christ. If you are 
true seed. Remember the, 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 the subject we went through about the seed. Remember that subject? If you are true seed, the Spirit will baptize you into the body of Christ, filling you and empowering you. And you will receive the word for your day and age. See how clear the true evidence becomes when the word is revealed to you. Again, not. Jesus was the royal seed. He lived in a human body. When the spirit called to him, the word manifested thought, he went to Jordan and was there baptized in water. Upon obeying the word, the Holy Spirit came upon him and the voice said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead. The voice did not say, this has become my son. Jesus was the son. The Holy Ghost positioned him as that son before them all. You are not going to become a son or a daughter of God when you believe the message. You were conceived a son. You were born a son. The Holy Spirit only positions you in your place as a son. Amen. Then having been filled thus, and the same pattern holds at Pentecost and ever after. He went in, demonstrated power, receiving the full revelation of God and from God for that day. Now we have been constantly saying that the true evidence of being baptized with the Holy Ghost is for the believer to receive the word for the age in which he lives. Amen. The light of your day when it shines across the seed, it will germinate. Yes, sir. And if it doesn't germinate, it's probably not the right seed. Because that light of that day is a special light to germinate the seed that has been manifested in that day. Amen. Oh, the prophet says, the voice did not say, this has become my son. Jesus was the son. The Holy Ghost positioned him as that son before them all. That's what the Holy Spirit will do to us. And the prophet says that pattern still remains the same. From Pentecost all the way to here. You don't become a son by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You are positioned as a son by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the eternal seed of God was always in you before you were manifest on the earth. You were elected before you were born. Just like Jacob was elected before he was even born. Amen. Amen. The election of God. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. What does that statement in itself say? That Christ will be the firstborn amongst brethren. It means these people that are called by his purpose and are purpose to conform to the image of his son, they are the same seed. They have the same seed as Christ. Because if the seed is not the same, then how does he become the firstborn amongst many brethren? What is the Holy Ghost? <laughs> it's the very life of Christ. So when you have the Holy Ghost, you have the same spiritual DNA as the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he becomes the firstborn amongst many brethren. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Amen. And that is what makes the believer rejoice. Yes, sir. So true. This is what differentiates the two, Jacob and Esau. Because Jacob 
no matter how he got it, he knew he had to have it. Yes, sir. <laughs> he knew that without the birthright, he was nothing. His attitude towards the birthright was like, I need to have it or I'll die. And that's the attitude of the believer. I need to have the Holy Ghost or else I die. The purpose of the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your life, it's so important to you, nothing else takes its place. <laughs> Amen. There's a lot of things that are important to people in our days. But the seed, the seed, the most important thing to the seed is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we live now in the days of Laodicea where there's other things that are enticing us. Where we, we think we can go this way and that way and pursue this career and pursue that. The things that are more important to individuals now is more about money, getting established, yeah. securing my future, getting an education, and all these things are taking first place. Amen. And people don't have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. They are under pressure to make money more than they are under pressure to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. The ones that are not going to be deceived are the elect. Amen. And the elect goes after the Holy Ghost. It, what that means is without the Holy Ghost, you will be deceived. That's right. Amen. How do you get deceived? It's what everybody else is doing. Yeah. That's where the deception is. Everybody is doing this. I'll lag behind. People are advancing. People are going. People, Brother so-and-so has this. Sister so-and-so has this. Have you seen what they have done? You just need to compromise a little bit and be able to obtain this. That's where the deception is. Yeah. And you see big people in the message compromising, and you want to compromise also. <laughs> the elect, the focus is on the birthright. Yeah. Everything else comes second. But the elect knows without the birthright they are not going anywhere. <laughs> You don't get strong amens though sometimes when you preach like this. It was your anti-progress. <laughs> Amen. People need to achieve in life. No problem with that, brother. But at what cost? That's exactly right. If it makes you lose the Holy Ghost. Is it worth it? Yeah. Don't just jump at anything that gives you money. Another individual can go into it and achieve and be saved. But not everyone can survive in that environment. Just because brother so-and-so has survived in that environment does not mean you will survive. Just because sister so-and-so has survived in that environment does not mean you will survive. You know yourself. The calling of God upon of li your life is more important than anything. Amen. And you know how equipped you are to be in certain environments. So I'm not saying anything against any environment. Because that environment, another person can have the makeup to survive there. Another person can work there, do this and that, and still be the seed of God. Not anything against that, but it may not be the best for everybody. Amen. I'll tell you that. Yes, sir. Amen. You've got to have the equipment. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. You've got to have the equipment Amen. to deal with what comes with it. Amen. And that comes even with spiritual callings. Yes, sir. Sometimes we just want to jump on it because I saw brother so and so do it. You need to have the material and the equipment Amen. to deal with what comes with that calling. Amen. Because nothing is easy. Amen. And this is where people fail. Because they think it's just something they can jump into. You need to be called Amen. and equipped. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Why am I saying that? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. When God calls you, he will cause you to be conformed 
to the image of his son. When God calls you for a certain role, he will cause you to be conformed to the candidate who fits that responsibility. But you need to have the ability to conform. You need to be the material that can be bent and twisted and turned in order to build the character that's needed. If you are a character that when you try to be bent, you crack, don't stand there. You break to pieces. You go deep sea diving without the right kind of gear. Oh, brother, you will explode. <laughs> Amen. That's God's way. All right, let's see where we, can, where we are so that we can continue. All right, let's continue on the next quote. No, is, is that the next one? Did you not read that? No, we read that. Because the, now the evidence, yes. You see, they could not figure out God's love. They thought that love meant no suffering. They thought that love meant a baby with parental care. But God said that his love was elective. Elective love. The proof of his love is election. That no matter what happened, his love was proven truly by the fact they were chosen unto salvation. Because God hath chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. He may commit you to death as he did Paul. He may commit you to suffering as he did Job. That is his pro, uh, prerogative. He is sovereign, but it is all with a purpose. Amen. If he did not have a purpose, then he would be the author of frustration and not of peace. His purpose is that after we have suffered a while, we would be made perfect, be established, strengthened, and settled. If you are the seed of God, whatever you are going through, it's for a purpose. It may be painful. It may be stressful. It may be too much pressure. But if you are elected and called of God and predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, it's all for a purpose. Because if, it wasn't, if there was no purpose, why are you suffering, brother? Why are you suffering, sister? God would be just frustrating you, confusing you, putting pressure on you. For what? But whatever you are going through, it's for a purpose. The prophet says, so that we, after we have suffered a while, we would be made perfect, be established, strengthened, and settled. It's very important to catch the mystery yes, of the election of God. Amen. Don't allow the devil to beat you down and compare you to brother so-and-so, to sister so-and-so. You are not good enough. That don't matter. What matters is what is God's purpose for your life? Amen. What are you called to be? Amen. Be what you are supposed to be. Amen. Not what the society wants you to be. Yeah. Not what the church wants you to be. Not what this person or that person wants you to be. Be what God has made you to be. Because you were born for that purpose. For such a time as this, you were born for that purpose. And it's not people who qualify you. It's God who has given you the equipment to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. You need to have confidence in who God has made you to be. Because without that confidence, if you cannot have confidence in what God has called you to be, yeah. you will never have confidence in anybody. Yeah. Because you doubt yourself. Yeah. How can you believe others when you doubt yourself? Yeah. That's exactly right. That's right. Amen. How can you believe others when you doubt yourself? What has God called you to be? Are you a child of God? If you are a child of God, find your place. The Holy Spirit will bless you positionally into your place. And if you are struggling to find your place, it's high time you start to pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
Because the Holy Ghost will take you to your place. Praise the Lord. That's why there's confusion. Even in the ministry. It's people jostling. Trying to take positions. Now, the God's gifts will always find their place. There's too much unbelief. If we believe the word of God, there is no jostling. There is no pushing, nudging, backbiting, backstabbing. All these things to kill influence. Nothing like that. If you believe in the calling of God, God will take you where you are supposed to be. No man can stand before you. The calling of God is greater than any person standing in your way. Praise the Lord. Everything else cannot stand in your way. Even your background cannot stand in your way. The election of God is greater than all the forces that can stand against you. And that's where the church needs to be. To believe in what God has called them to be. Rather, if you are a believer, you are here by predestination. God knows your name. God knows you. And he chose you. Too much looking at your own limitations. It's time you move from that. Don't look at your limitations. Look at the purpose of God for your life. Amen. 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 Why is this brother preaching this? Because that's what I felt like preaching. (laughs) Too many interpretations. I'm preaching it because that's what I felt like preaching. Amen. Amen. God's love is election. It's elective love. Sometimes we think, oh, if I'm chosen of God, things are supposed to flow. Everybody's going to give me a thumbs up. (laughs) When I get thumbs up from people, then that means what I'm doing. God is happy with me. That can be the opposite. Sometimes the right path is the most resistance. But you need to approach everything with the right attitude. That's why the scripture says, make sure of your calling and election. That's the first thing you need to do. Make sure of your calling and your election. Because if you get into situations and you start doubting yourself, and Goliath is, that Goliath is looking at you like this, and you are swinging that slingshot and you start questioning yourself, it's too late. That situation is way out of hand. You cannot control it. It's no time to question yourself right there. You need to know what you believe. And David was not second guessing. His brothers were like, "Ah, we knew this this is a problem. This is a problem. He likes to show off in front of people. This man will kill him. That's what they thought. David knew where he was coming from. David knew about the lion. Yes. God, David knew about the bear. Yes. He knew there was some carcass somewhere yes. because God had stood with him. Yes. And if God could stand with him when he was facing the bear or the lion, that same God was going to stand with him fighting this Goliath. In this day, you start doubting yourself. Questioning yourself, do I believe, do do I have the Holy Ghost or not, do I have the calling of God or not, in this day, 2021, it's a big problem, because this is a day of great deception, it would deceive the very elect, if it were possible, but it's not, it's close, but it will not, so the only thing that will stop the bride, from deception is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I remember in our fellowship last night talking about how much information is in the world. Information and misinformation. You need the Holy Ghost to be able to filter what is truth and what is not the truth. Too many conspiracies, too many truths, too many voices speaking about this and that. Which one can you believe? You need the Holy Ghost. Too many ministers, confident and sure of themselves and preaching like they know what they are talking about, and then they've got no idea. You need the Holy Ghost to look at things and be like, you know what? There's an uncertain sound somewhere. And the only thing that will enable us 
to get into that is the Holy Ghost. There's too much we are exposed to. Not in the sense of worldly things only. How many services are we streaming? How many videos, things that are we seeing about the world? I'm not talking about, about the world. How many ministers have we come to know, especially around this time of COVID? How many ministers have we just encountered on the internet? Many. You need the Holy Ghost. Because when you have itching ears, you heap unto yourself teachers. That will tell you what you want to hear. But maybe not necessarily the truth. Am I saying anything against your streaming? No. Be led of the Spirit. Smen and Church H's last quote. The cloudy skies and storms of life are no signs of God's disapproval. Amen. If you are in a valley, brother, that doesn't mean God doesn't love you. You try to do this thing, you fail. Try to do that, you fail. Try to be a good brother, people don't like you at church. Try to be a good sister, sister so also doesn't greet you. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. Amen. 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 Neither are bright skies and still waters signs of his love and approval. God bless you, my precious brother. God bless you, sister. And you get a kiss on the cheek. God bless you. That doesn't mean God's approval. His approval of any of us is only in the beloved. His love is elective, which he had for us before the foundation of the world. Does he love us? Ah, yes. But how shall we know? We shall know because he said so. And manifested that he did love us. For he brought us to himself and gave us his spirit, placing us as sons. The placing as sons comes by the spirit, not by being in the message. By the spirit, you get placed as sons. And how shall I prove my love to him? By believing what he said. And by conducting myself with joy amidst the trials. That he, in his wisdom, allows to come to pass. Amen. Are you in a valley? Yes. Fill my way with love. Yes. Are you on the mountain top? Yes. Fill my way with love. Amen. Do you have people's approval? Fill my way with love. Amen. Do you have people's disapproval? Fill my way with love. Your election, your purpose in life. God will bring the interpretation of it. Many a time we dedicate too much time to try and prove. You will never prove yourself. God has to prove you. God has to vindicate you. God has to prove he has called you. If you are a believer, don't fear the world and all that's coming. Because sometimes we find ourselves caught up in the fear of what's going to come. The fear of the unknown. Oh, what's going to happen to the world? Oh, look at how the world is. Look at America. Look at all those things. All true prophecies. But after everything has been said and done, let not fear come to your heart. But let that blessed assurance of the promise of his seal to know that you are sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of your redemption. Your greatest joy is in the seal. And the seal will push out all fear. Because the prophet says before that atomic bomb hits the earth, his bride will take off. There's no judgment for the bride. (laughs) The bride may be squeezed a little bit to to, to take all the greenness, the meanness, the negativity out of the place. But no, no judgment. No tribulation. Just a little bit of a squeeze to place positionally. Not judgment. May the Lord help us to trust what God has done for you. You know, when I think of Brother Branham, his greatest assurance was the call of God upon his life. 
He would pray for demons, especially the, he talks several times about a cross-eyed demon. Cross eyes, he'd pray for it, and it would remain stubborn. And Brother Abraham would say, I now adjure you by the commission given to me by an angel. He went back to his calling. He was sure of who he was. He knew his place in the scriptures. And brothers, you are not going to bluff the devil. You don't get warm by a painted fire. The devil knows a scarecrow when he looks at one. You can talk big and sound big, but the devil will just be lacking and saying, let him finish talking so that I can go and carry out my tests. <laughs> That's the time we need to stand on who you are and what God has called you to be. If you are a believer, then you can stand and say, I'm a child of God. You, I'm, I'm a daughter of God. Devil, you've got no chance. How can you intercede when you don't know your place? If you are a mother and you don't know your place as a mother, how are you going to intercede for your children? You've got every right to stand in the way and say, Devil, I've seen your tricks. I am a child of God. God appointed me. God anointed me to be a mother to these children. I stand in my place as a mother. Move away. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You do like Auntie Jemima. Amen. She stood in her place. It's not just about brothers. Sisters can know who they are in the scriptures, in the calling of God. They say, devil, I have seen your tricks. And his, his son was sick of a social disease. A disease that he went out to look for himself. Riotous living. And yet the mother's blessing could stand in. <laughs> there is moments when you need to know who you are. And to believe in the calling of God. Sometimes God has called you to be in that place to stand as a mother and defend your children and fight for them in prayer and you are busy doubting yourself and doubting others. It's time you go back to who you are. That's where the problem sometimes is. Because we spend so much time doubting and digging other people. We forget to focus on ourselves. And when problems come, we don't know how to deal with them. But sometimes the best way to deal with the problem is to know who you are. And stand your ground. Give energy to the right things. Give energy to the right things. We are giving too much oxygen to the wrong things. But when we know our place, if I know I'm a father, amen, and the devil is trying to play around with my children, I will get to a certain point where I will get upset. Say, Sister Abigail, today, please don't dish out any food for me. I'm on a fast. The devil is playing tricks with my children. I'm now standing, all the heads are off. The auto electrician is out of the picture now. The pastor is out of the picture. I'm now a father to these children. Devil, move away. Thank you, Lord. Because I believe I don't have those children by mistake. I was appointed to be their father. Amen. God knew before the foundation of the world that I would have them in the way I had them. And he knew in me was equipment to deal with whatever comes with having those children the way they are. So don't feel pity for me. Hallelujah. It can be heavy, but I can deal with it. If I couldn't deal with it, God would have never brought it. I'm not trying to create a pity party. Sometimes we, we love pity parties. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, darling. Sometimes you need to move away from them. Say, so I've seen that devil. He likes drama. <laughs> but no drama in my house. <laughs> no drama in my house. Because this is my house. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes you can take a walk around your house yeah. and just look around and say, this is the portion that God has given me for now. I'm here. This is my house. I don't want things to go wrong here. One brother says he was having problems with fleas in his house. 
Don't ask me why. He was just having problems with fleas. He says he prayed. He said, Lord, when you created us, you put everything under our control. I'm spending so much money trying to spray these things and chase them away from my house and they don't seem to go. But I have a place yeah. as your child. Amen. Deal with this, please. And the lies, whatever it was. And they disappeared. Yeah. No spraying. Yeah. It got to a point where he got so frustrated, it reminded him of who he was. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes we need that. Sometimes God throws this thing in your way, throws that thing. He's trying to remind you of who you are. And then after a while you realize, no, I'm a child of God. Man. This situation is getting out of hand. Devil, move over. It starts with you. Yes. It starts with you. When you believe in the calling of God upon your life, His eternal purpose for your life, you can believe in others. But until you get to that place, you will never believe others. You will never believe in the calling of others because you don't believe in your own calling. And we need to do that to make sure of who we are before God. And the only way we can know is when He gives us that blessed seal the seal of his Holy Spirit, then we know who we are. Amen. There's no doubting then. You are a child of God. Amen. Amen. You've got the moisture for growth. <laughs> Let us stand on our feet. So we are not here by mistake. Amen. You are here by divine appointment. You might have been looking for a job, a better living for your family. But guess what? You are here. <laughs> and God uses all those things. Circumstances in life. Holocaust. Dictators. Cruelty. Genocide to drive his people to certain places Amen. to fulfill his word and his purpose. And he used so many different circumstances amongst us to bring us into this one room. But if you think it's just a coincidence, you will miss the point. It's all for a reason. It's all for a purpose. And the most important thing is for us to know what that purpose is. I think let's sing Feel My Way. And then we'll sing another worship song before we get into a time of prayer. Go ahead with a smile, brother. Amen. Whatever comes your way, you have a smile. That's right. All right, 28. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way. Thou is gone, leading straight to the land above. Leading straight everywhere to the sand and the land. Oh, feel my way every day with love. Feel my way. Oh, in my soul, set it 
satisfied. Oh, fill my way every day with life. Fill my way every day with life. Oh, as I walk with our heavenly God. Because he first loved me. Yes, sir. He bypassed Amen. Ishmael and he went for Isaac. Bypassed Esau, went for Jacob. Bypassed all the brothers of Joseph Amen. and went for Joseph. Bypassed all the saints in Jerusalem and went for Paul. Don't look at how and where you are. Mm. It's His grace. Yes, sir. Having said that, if you allow me, whilst you're still standing, before we sing this song, to just read one scripture. It's all about His grace. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then He answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, no by power, Amen. but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Amen. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace, grace unto it. Amen. It's all by his grace. Yes, sir. Don't you worry about your limitations. God called you. Yes, sir. Don't worry about your inability. God called you. That habit that you are struggling to break, tell it something. God called you. All the failures that you see around you, don't let them discourage you. God called you. There's victory somewhere for you. Because God purposed in his heart that you'd be a victorious child of God. There shall be a bride in the end time. 
without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Don't look around and look who's it referring to. It's talking about you, my sister. It's talking about you, my brother. Part of a bride without spot or wrinkle. How is that possible? Because he purposed it that you would be part of that bride. Be like Jonah. See beyond the present circumstances. Don't see flesh. Flesh will always fail. But look at the promise of the world. I Father, truly, 
as, we thank as, you, Lord. as husbands in our, in our households, Amen. as fathers, Lord, as brethren, Lord Jesus. As thank you, Lord Jesus. Know our place, know our position, Amen. know where we're standing, Father. By faith, we can apply that token to the situations that are coming Amen. into our households, Lord. Yes, Lord and Jesus. knowing, Lord Jesus, that, that those devils do not have permission, do yes, not have Lord right, Jesus. do not have a claim, because you've placed us there, Lord. For that very purpose. For such an hour as this. Amen. We have been raised up. Amen. In our kingdom. Lord, yes, Lord Jesus. For such a time as this. Amen. And Father, truly, my heart has been touched this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My heart has been encouraged. Amen. Lord Hallelujah. For such a time as this. Amen. We have been placed in these positions. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That we can take power and authority. We can, we can take that place. Amen. And apply that token. Amen. And see you, Lord, Amen. move on our behalf. Amen. Lord God, we just want to commit the rest of the day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May you just take, may we take these things, Lord. Amen. May, we, may, may it not be like the seed just upon the wayside. Yes. That the birds come and just take, Lord. Mm -hmm. May they go down deep in our hearts. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take root, yeah. take life, yeah. and start to grow and push Amen. out and bring forth fruit of your word. Amen. We just commit ourselves now. We thank you for uh, our brother. Amen. Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the word. We care for Lord Jesus. Amen. Give you the honor and glory. Amen. As we part now, Lord, go with us, Father. Amen. Uh, uh, with a smile. Amen. With, with, a, with a spring in us. Yes, Lord Jesus. With, with the goodness of God. Amen. Bubbling out of our hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. With the, with the strength of the Lord is our joy. Amen. We just commit ourselves now to your hands in that precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. Thank you for coming in the house of the Lord. Amen. It was wonderful to have you this morning. Uh, let's continue praying for our services, continue praying for the meetings, pray for us as we travel. I just want to uh, remind that uh, if it be possible, please, may we continue to have our Wednesday evening tape services. Amen. Fathers in the homes, uh, heads of the homes, whatever situation you have, take your place. Amen. We know you listen to the tapes other days, but I think it's also important that as a group, Amen. We can all sit around that time on a Wednesday evening and listen to a tape. Amen. And we, the church should never take the place of the Father in the home. And therefore we are giving that room to say, whoever is head of a home, feel the inspiration of God on your heart. Choose a tape of your choice that you feel is appropriate for you on that particular day. And play that tape and pray together with your family. Amen. We may not be gathered together but we will still be one in the spirit. So if we are able to do that, sometimes the days are busy, we are tired, but surely we can still invest in the things of God. Amen. Let's always remember that Wednesday tape service. Amen. Each head of each home, whatever you are, even if you are single, you can still take the time and listen to your tape together with the saints so that in the same spirit, we are united on the word of God and pray together and pray for one another. May the Lord richly bless you. I appreciate you. I love you all. God bless you. As we get a dismissal our song from my brother. Amen. Let's just clap our hands and thank the Lord for the... Amen. We just sing for He knew me, yet He loved me. Amen. When he was on the cross, I was on his body. Until we meet next week, may the Lord bless you. Amen. For he